Hello folks, welcome aboard, Joe Holbrook here, the cloud tech guy here, wanted to do a quick shout out and cover a few things on the Google Cloud Associate Cloud Engineer exam. Now, a couple things, I've been contacted by a good amount of folks on YouTube, Udemy, and uh, LinkedIn as well, around a course for the Associate Cloud Engineer. Now, I did create some practice questions. However, due to the, you know, what I see very low demand for this cert right now, in other words, I just don't see a lot of people interested in, in it just based on um, the number of people signing up for the uh, courses as well as um, the practice questions. Uh, I decided not to do a formal course, at least for the beta part of uh, the exam. Now, uh, it's already May 22nd to 23rd, just about, and what I like to do is instead of instead of going through and doing a, a formal course, uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually give my free time on YouTube here just for the fun of it and just walk you through different sections of the exam. So this video here, I'm going to try to keep it under 35 minutes or so, and I'm going to walk you through section one. And then there'll be uh, other videos uh, on section two. There'll be another video on section two, that is, another one on section three. So there's five sections, so you could expect five different videos. Now I'm going to keep these under 30 minutes, more than likely maybe 35, uh, just because of the time it takes to set up and also um, upload and go through the uh, process. The, the reality is, is um, I just don't see the 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 demand for this cert right now um, because um, here's my thought: is because of the number of people that signed up for the GCP Cloud Architect course when it came out um, versus what I'm seeing now, it's it's not even uh, a twentieth of the demand uh, and. The reality is, is um, it's just not very profitable <laughs> to put in a lot of time uh, to develop courses online. And the the reality is, is um, unless if you know you're the top AWS guy, uh, it's it's just not really worth worth your time. And that's why I've been focusing mainly on blockchain because that's really where the opportunity is, and at least from what I'm seeing now. I do hope everybody's success, and that's why I'm spending some time to walk you through what I saw on the beta exam so that you can take it and pass it, hopefully, and become certified, because I do wish everybody luck on this exam. Okay, let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through section one. I'm going to walk you through the uh, three subdomains or three uh, parts of the outline. Now, this is really objectives in the, the t you know, test development world, course development world, but Google calls it an outline. So this is basically what it is. So I'm going to just really call this an outline I'm going through and walk you through most of, most of these line items anyways. Now, um, the test is passable for sure uh, if you have some experience. And the reality is, is if you could memorize certain things, like certain command lines and certain window, um, what I call the window walkthrough, then you'll be fine. For anyone that took the the Windows uh, courses, uh, you know, back in the, you know, uh, late 90s, early 2000s, mid 2000s, you know, Windows was known you have to know this menu to go to this menu and this sub menu and that sub menu, and there are certainly some questions that Google you know, had tested on, especially around how to, um, you know, set up monitoring or how to, um, for example, change IAM permissions. And you needed to know the exact menu routine. All right, let's get started. So what I'm going to do now is let's talk about projects and accounts. I'm going to go over to um, the overview section. This is very simple. It's the introductory part of of the Google Cloud Platform website. Now, the first thing I want to point out is you have to understand a few things about projects, resources, organizations. Now, you need to know what a project is. There is there was certainly at least four or five questions that asked you to talk about projects or answer questions effectively on projects. Now, 
one of the questions, and I'm looking at my notes, uh, was focused mainly on uh, validating projects, validating quotas for projects. Also, another question was basically, can you change a project uh, ID, a project name, or a project number? And again, you want to be aware of what a project is and understand that a project is what? It's unique. In other words, that is unique across GCP, that project ID. So therefore, you can't have another project ID, you know, in, in, in the GCP platform. So just be aware of that. Another thing, too, you associate billing. And in the, I just want to show you here. Bill, we're going to talk about billing. I was really surprised by the number of questions on billing and pricing. Uh, I really didn't associate uh, a cloud engineer being worried about pricing and billing. That's more an architect, but Google does look on the world a little differently than most people or most companies. Okay. Now, one of the things to be aware of is when it comes to billing, you, of course, can have multiple projects, right, that can be billed to the same account. Now, another thing, too, is, again, just be aware of what a project is, but also know the CLI. I'm going to walk you through some of the CLI things to pay attention to, but I would recommend you go through the platform overview, refresh your memory. Now, let's go over here to the console. Okay. Now, project. Let's go to project settings. A couple of things you need to know, and pay attention here. Because again, I, you know, I'm not wasting my time for the fun of it. I'm just trying to, to be straight up and, and uh, get you um, as prepared as I can. So the first thing is, is project name, project ID, and project number. Remember, project ID is unique. Um, now, you can do a few things here. You could shut down a project. You could move it or migrate it. One of the questions on the exam was focused on essentially how do you migrate a project. So if you go over here to migrate, right, it says that if you migrate, right, it can't be detached from the organization once it's migrated. Now, you're going to migrate only in most cases, you know, let's say, for example, here, <clears throat> if you're uh, part of an organization, and you want to have that project put under that organization. And this is something I, I've seen more than a few times where a company A buys company B, and they want to put together all the company resources that are in GCP under one billing account or under one organization in a lot of cases. And so you could migrate a project. So be aware that you can do that. Another thing, too, that they really liked uh, was around, uh, and now remember, too, the settings for a project is where I am an admin. Once again, where is the settings for a project? How do you change project settings? Where is it? I am an admin. Okay. Now, another thing, too, that I was a little bit sort of surprised to see was uh, over here on under I am. And uh, over here, so you could see here you have, a, I'm under the My Python Hello World project. Now, you could see here that there's members and then there's roles. Now, you do need to be aware that you could add members and roles. Okay, so remember two things. When it comes to permissions for a project, what are two things we want to worry about? Members and roles. Another thing, too, to point out that I uh, was interesting is you could see here, um, when you see my Python Hello World AppSpot.gServiceAccount.com, what is that? That's a service account, okay? When you see the AppSpot, whenever you see gServiceAccount.com, that's a what? A service account. Now, again, simple to remember, but again, these are give me questions if you remember them. And let's go over here to roles. Now, under roles, a role is what? That's a group of permissions you can assign to members. Now, remember, too, you have the ability to go under where? IAM, roles, 
Okay, remember, I'm doing this on purpose, not because I think you're not paying attention or you're clueless. I'm just doing this because I'm trying to get you to <laughs> remember these things for the test. Okay, I am admin and roles. Okay, where do you change permissions for roles in the GUI? And now again, I haven't talked about the CLI yet, but you do it where? Here. Okay, got it? Now, go over here to, you could create a role under what? Under roles. Very simple. I know it, it sounds silly, but expect some questions that are going to test you on what windows uh, menus and sub menus. I call it windows. And, and of course, it's really the interface menus. But, you know, for those that were Windows folks in the past, you'll appreciate what I'm saying. Okay, so I think I harped enough about projects from a GUI standpoint. Now, let's go over to this page here. Okay, this is storage projects. Now, let's say, for example, you want to modify a project. You want to change the project name. Now, looking at my notes here, Let's say you want to validate a project and you want to validate quotas. What do you do? Okay. Well, again, you go ahead and you use a CLI, right? You go to the console, use GSUtil. You could use what? The API, XML API. Go over here, look at permissions, right? Let's say you want to modify a bucket. Again, let's go ahead and just keep it on project right now. Let's go to GSUtil. Now, GSUtil, right? This is, again, commands that you could use to specify a project. Let's say you want to set a default project. Let's say you did. You want to set up, for example, um, permissions. What do you do? First thing you want to do, for those that haven't downloaded the SDK, uh, you need to do that and practice. And again, go through the steps. I encourage you to go through Quick Labs or Code Labs and play around if you haven't. So the first thing that you do after you do what? After you install gcloud, right, you got to initialize it. You have to set it up. And then you just scroll down, right? And again, here are some uh, commands there. Now, let's go over here. And I think it was, give me one second. Here it is. Now, I would highly recommend you go to gcloud projects. Expect at least three, two or three questions just on the syntax. So, when you create a project, the syntax is what? gcloud projects create, right? Again, that's the, the uh, command itself. And then the additional syntax. Let's say, for example, you want to set something as a default in gcloud. Let's say, for example, by default, you want to go to a different project when you log in. What do you do? You want to set it as default. So again, know the syntax, expect to get a, several questions on just gcloud project syntaxes. Now, one more thing that I would recommend is you go over here and take a look. And let me just, I lost my place here, hold on. Um, okay. There it is. Okay, go back to the overview and make sure you look at, um, for example, gcloud auth. Um, this is an area here, for example, that they asked around service accounts. Like, what could you do around service accounts? gcloud auth activate service account. Make sure you take a look at this. For example, um, how to create keys. That was uh, oddly familiar. Again, I can't tell you exactly what was on the test. Uh, they probably won't appreciate that. But you want to take a look at the gcloud auth and definitely gcloud. Um, uh, let's see, where is it? Give me one sec. I just lost my place again. Hold on. Let me go back. Um, OK. Uh, actually, compute is a good one to talk about as well. Anyways, um, SDK. Okay, that's where I want to be. That's where it should be. Okay. Um, but anyway, so one more thing about the SDK before I forget. Now, there's actually a couple different ways you can install the SDK. You go over here if you're running Windows. 
it automatically will pick it up, of course. Install for Linux. If you go here, you go install for Windows. Again, you want to know how to set it up and how to initialize it. Remember, I just showed you um, how to initialize the SDK. What is the command for doing that? Gcloud init, correct, right? And again, what is another command you want to use when you're launching, for example, you want to use the browser, launching from a browser, I mean, right? Look at that. So again, make sure you know they're going to ask you on how to set up gcloud initially. Now, another one was, uh, here is what I want to show you, credentials. There are so many questions on IAM, and when I cover the IAM, I'm going to cover this a little bit more, but this is actually um, a really good page you got to look at, especially for the last section, section five. They really slammed you on gcloud. Uh, uh, for example, one of the questions was, how do you display a list of credentialed accounts and basically again you go ahead and look at properties by config list auth list right this shows you credentials so for example you'll have a g cloud auth list config list and a couple other g cloud commands and you have to pick the right one for what they're asking so again these are simple commands to remember but they're very necessary to pass this exam okay Let's proceed on back to resources. Now, uh, let me just go back here to, let's see. Okay, um, okay, now G Suite. One of the things I, I wanna make sure that you're aware of is you could go ahead and link your G Cloud environment to G Suite, right? To do that, I highly recommend you understand the process to do that. So, and also, too, you could use what the directory services as well. So once again, take a look at how to link users to the G Suite identities. Enabling APIs within projects. OK, let's go back to projects. All right. I'm going to go back to the project. I'm going to stay, just show you here. I just want to be redundant. i just go back because this is important to know. All right, so I'm in the console. Question is, is how do you actually enable specific ABI APIs for a specific project, right? And you could have multiple projects, but what do you have to do? You have to enable that API or those APIs on a per project basis, right? And you could also enable it on a per resource role, so on. There's a lot of granularity. And again, you need to know the roles, you need to know, um, how APIs are set up. For example, if we go here to project settings, and again, it's going to ask you, how do you enable an API for a specific project, right? And you're going to, to of course, want to pay attention. Now, if I go over here to IAM, right, you could see that I have what? I have specific roles here. It tells me, you know, uh, what it is. I have um, Google API service account here, right? And then if I go over here, Let's say I want to go to API. Just a couple different ways to do that. Go to API and services. And you can see that I have APIs enabled here. Now, again, what project am I in? My Python Hello World. And there's a couple ways to do this. On the test, you want to be aware of how you can enable or disable an API. For example, what menu do you go to? OK, right? Where am I? API and services. Dashboard. Right? There you go. And again, I, I hate to break bad news to you, but you do need to know the Windows processes, essentially, or the menu processes, the, the, the sub-menus to, to know. Now, you go over here to enable APIs and services. Now, it's also going to ask you what the best way is to get to the API library. And again, know how to get to the API library. And let's say I do want to enable an API, right? Let's say I want to enable Google Calendar. What do you do? I go to the to what? API library. I go enable it. Now, remember those costs and stuff affiliated with this. So if you spin it up, not all APIs, but just be aware that you could have costs as an enterprise, that is. It'll enable the API. And again, where am I at? See there, you need credentials, right? You have to create credentials for that. But again, make sure you know the menu. API and services, dashboard. 
and again, you want to be in the right project. But if I go over here to this project, right? And again, you have to do the the APIs and services on what? The project base. You have to enable it like here, BigQuery API. Okay, see this is enabled. If I want to disable it, I could go here, disable. Now it says, I, it also depends on these um, other services as an error. So basically you have to make sure you shut down uh, the right APIs in the right order. Okay, so I think I talked enough about projects to give you a good idea of what you can expect there. Now let's go over to 1.2, billing configurations. Okay, one of the things that you can certainly expect on the exam is to understand billing. And doo -doo 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 -doo. a little latency there today. Okay. Let me just go back. I don't know what the heck happened. Let's try it again. Okay. Now, let's go over here. Now, of course, for billing, you want to go to billing. Now, you can see here, here's um, sort of what I want to show you. The first thing. And looking at my notes, what's it say? It says, where is it? Okay. Um, basically, you have... Um, a situation where you want to move a project to another billing account. What do you do? Well, basically, you go over here to what's called a linked billing account. So basically, what's a linked billing account? I just go over here and create a billing account. And I can link it to what? What do I link it to? A project, right? And again, I could go ahead and rename it. So I go here, you'd say I have two billing accounts. So I go to manage billing accounts if I want. Now you can see that the projects that are linked to the billing account is stated right here, project name and project ID. Now, if I go to my billing account one, you could see that I have one project ID right there. So the lesson learned for this exam is you need to know how to set up linked billing accounts for projects and how do you do it, right? Again, fairly simple. Now, let's go back and talk about, okay, remember linking projects. Now, creating one or more billing accounts. Uh, again, this is not particularly hard. Uh, you know, uh, if you go over here to overview, right? I think I'm there actually right here. So I go over here to manage billing accounts and I go over. So again, for the test, you have to know the sub menu. It is what? It's basically I go to manage billing accounts and I go what? I create it and I name it and I go continue and you have to set up your payment information. That's simple enough, right? Again, these are give me questions if you can just remember. All right. Let's say, for example, uh, and let me look at the question in uh, the notes I have here. Okay. Now, when it comes to billing budgets and alerts, simply put, you just go over here. Let's just go over to the console. I just want to start out uh, where I should be. Now, what you could do is, again, you go over here to billing, right? And if I go to billing, right, I need to go over here. And then what do I do? I go over to what? Budget and alerts. And then I just create a budget. Now, why do you want to create a budget, right? You want to basically be able to be alerted if, you know, you exceed a specific resource usage, right? You could also notify yourself. Now, make sure you read this says you want to select a project and pub sub topic right what is going to happen now pub sub is what you're going to create a subscription right and basically have yourself notified you could send this to you know whatever service you're using uh, you can send it on an email whatever you want to do and then again you could modify the budget alert very simple right not particularly hard but the menu to do it is billing and budget alerts 
once again, I'm just uh, the messenger here. I didn't uh, develop the test. Okay. Now, here is the tricky part. Um, there is definitely two good questions on billing. Um, let's go over here to billing. Now, billing exports. All right. There's two ways you get to export your bill. You go via BigQuery or you go to a file export. For the test, you need to know both and know why you want to do both. So, for example, BigQuery. Let's say you want to go ahead and analyze your spending. You can do that. The best way to do it is to go to BigQuery. Now, to do this, pay attention because, again, I'm, I'm harping for a reason. You have to, basically, the first thing you need to do is do what? Before you export to BigQuery, you got to do what? You have to create what? A BigQuery data set. So go to BigQuery, create a data set. Once you create a data set, direct it over here, right? And again, it'll find it in your project, right? And go ahead and then save it. Now, second thing, file export. Now, this one here, pay attention again. This is where you can go to edit settings and you could export this to a bucket. Now, you need to create a bucket before you do anything. So if you don't create a bucket and have the right permissions to export to cloud storage from billing, then you know, you're not going to be able to be successful in doing that. So pay attention. So make sure you create a bucket. And then you could add a prefix. Now, a prefix does what? Helps you identify what it is. Okay, now pay attention. Last thing. What are the two formats you could export a file to, right? To a CSV file or JSON, right? Again, don't get tricked by those. You can't export it to Word. You can't export it to Excel. Uh, well, you could certainly use CSV and Excel, but just pay attention. Make sure you know CSV and JSON, right? Now, one last thing to, to pay attention to, reports. Again, you go over here to reports. You could go ahead and look at the different presets that are there. There are presets. This tells you your cloud spending, right? And it tells you the projects, right, that you're spending money in. So it allows you to get an idea of your cloud spend. Again, that's under reports. So play around with this. So expect uh, just just on you know 1.2 at least you know six questions in this area, literally. Okay, 1.3. Um, I'm not going to walk you through installing the CLI or SDK. It's very simple. I just showed you the CLIs. You're going to need to know. Make sure you know that you have to initialize the SDK and what is the command to do that, right? G cloud what, init, right? Make sure you know, go back and make sure you memorize it. And that is section one. That's really what I want to cover. Uh, again, um, just be aware that um, you need to really understand uh, the, um, the billing. Now, when it comes to the pricing calculator, that's actually section two. I will cover that in the next video. Because again, there's a couple interesting questions that I want to make sure you know. So go to the next video and we'll cover that. All right, guys, I wish you luck. Continue on.